بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه الطيبين الطاهرين I ask Allah تبارك وتعالى to grant us all the sincere intentions أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الحافظ ابن الجوزي رحمه الله said the first time that the angel Israfil alayhi salam blows into the horn. The angels and the people as well as the jinn and the animals that were alive on the earth at this time or in the skies will die. As for the prophets that are inside their graves, at the blowing of the horn they will faint. Then forty years will pass. After these 40 years, Angel Israfil السلام, will be resurrected by the order of Allah. And he will stand ala sakhrati baytil maqdis. He will stand on the sakhra, on the rock of baytil maqdis in Jerusalem. And he will call out. He will blow into the horn and he will say, Ayyuhal Ivamul Baliyah, O you worn away bones واللحوم المتقطعة and oh you torn up flesh والعروق المتمزقة oh you veins that have been shredded لتقمنا إلى العرض على الملك الديان Rise Rise so that you would see your deeds When Israfil عليه السلام blows into the horn After being resurrected the souls of all of the people and all of the jinn, but the humans especially, from the time of Adam alayhi salam to the souls of the last people upon whom the first blowing of the horn occurred. All of these souls. They would come. <coughs> Towards the end of this worldly life, our Prophet والسلام, informed us that 100 years would pass. لا يقول فيها أحد لا إله إلا الله. Nobody in these 100 years, in the final 100 years on earth, before the horn, horn is blown into, 
will say La ilaha illallah. In some hadiths it's mentioned that some people will ask, who were these people that would say La ilaha illallah? And it would be said that these were people that existed in the past and now they have passed. The souls, they would come upon the second blowing of the horn from wherever they were. They would come and collect together like a gigantic swarm of bees. The souls, before the first, before the second blowing into the horn, are to be in different places. Your soul will be in one of these places. Either your soul will be already in paradise. These are the souls of the pious. Or your soul will be in a place close to the Arsh, and these are again the souls of the pious. Or the soul will be in the first sky, and these are the souls of some sinful Muslims. Or the soul will be below the first sky, suspended, hanging. These are the souls of the sinful Muslims. Or the soul of the kafir will be in Sijin, either in hell, in this well known as Sijin, or they will be on the seventh earth. These souls that are in these different places on the second blowing of the horn they will gather together and they will come. If you consider that today there are approximately 8 billion people on the face of the earth excluding Ya'juj and Ma'juj and some other nations that the Prophet mentioned alayhi salatu was salam. So it's not just Ya'juj and Ma'juj that are and Ma'juj that are hidden away from us among the humans. Then imagine, and this is at present, imagine then ten years ago how many people were alive but are not alive today. And then 10 years before that, and then 10 years before that, take it back 10,000 or so years when Adam alayhi salam descended to the earth. So all of these souls that had occupied specific bodies, they will come on the day of judgment. Some will descend from paradise. Some will descend from the first sky. Some will descend from a place below the first sky. Some will rise up from hell. Some will rise up from the seventh earth. They will all come from different places. The souls of the believers will be illuminated. They will be gleaming, shining, perhaps even sparkling. And this is the nur of al-Iman, the correct belief in Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. A nur that is a result of their good deeds. As for the souls of the non-Muslims, they will be dark. How did the souls get to these different places? The souls, our souls, they will remain within our bodies in the grave. 
after we are buried and the souls are injected into the bodies, they will remain there until the body decays. Once the body decays and nothing of the body remains except the tailbone, as the Prophet referred to it, when this bone it remains, the soul exits the body. And it goes to a place that Allah eternally willed for it to go to, whether that be paradise, in a place that is different to the place that it will occupy in the hereafter or under the arsh or in the first sky or under the first sky or down to Sijin. When the body decays, this is what will happen. The Prophet والسلام, said that عَجْبُ الذَّنَبْ مِنْهُ يُرَكَّبُ insan. The human being will be reassembled from this tailbone. And this is what will remain after the body decays. Within the soil of this earth, millions and millions and billions of bodies that have decayed, layers of soil and rock being buried under layers and layers of soil and rock. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned that when the horn is blown into a second time and the souls gather, they come from all these different places, Allah has eternally willed that it would rain. This rain it will almost impregnate all the tail bones that are inside the earth. It will rain, the rain will seep through the soil until it reaches the tail bone. Until it reaches the tail bone that is in your body right at this very moment. If your body is among the bodies that is going to decay, and most bodies will decay, even the bodies of the pious people in general decay. But this does not mean that they experience any pain. When this happens, a person, the person, you and I, our bodies will begin to sprout. They will begin to grow like a vegetable in the earth. The seed, it starts to grow. It starts to sprout. Like that, a person's limbs will be reassembled, recreated. Allah revealed, كَمَا بَدَأْنَا أَوَّلَ خَلْقٍ نُعِيدُهُ Just as Allah created you. The first time in the womb of your mother, like that again, Allah will recreate you. So a person's body will be recreated, it will be reassembled in the ground, a lifeless body. And when this assimilation is complete, Those souls, your soul and my soul, will search for the tailbone of the body that it once possessed. It will search for the body, this vehicle, that the soul, if it occupies it, the person is considered to be alive. So if one imagines that the horn has just been blown into, it's rained, the rain has seeped into the earth 
and inside the earth on many different levels, perhaps hundreds of meters down, maybe a mile down, there are bodies that are being reassembled, recreated, sprouting, until the people who have just been buried recently. The rain reaches this area and these bodies are sprouting. And then there are these souls that are coming, like the biggest cloud you've ever seen. All these souls, like one of the awliya, Al-Haddad, mentioned they would come like a swarm of bees. And then you can imagine them shooting and diving into the ground, looking for that body which Allah has eternally willed for this person to occupy. Can you imagine? While the body is sprouting, there is no consciousness there in the body. The soul is not there. Where will the consciousness be? Where will the hearing and the seeing and the feeling, where will it be? It will be in the soul. So a person's soul will experience that you will experience this one day. I will experience this one day when my soul is searching for the body, wherever it is to be buried, wherever it is to be found, wherever my body is to end up. وَلَا تَدْرِي نَفْسٌ بِأَيِّ أَرْضٍ تَمُوتٍ no person knows where they will die. <clears throat> so they would rush these souls and dive into the earth. And when they find the reassembled body, they would be injected into it. And Israfil alayhi salam would continue blowing into the horn while all this is going on. And then the people will begin to come out of their graves. When the people exit their graves, that spot of land where they are buried, it will crack open. There will be cracks all over the earth's surface, people coming out of the ground. Some clothed, some naked, some hungry, some starving, some full and satisfied. When a person comes out of the ground, They will be accompanied by their deeds. This will happen to both you and I. We will be accompanied by our deeds. Just as our deeds accompanied us in the grave, we will be accompanied by our deeds. If the slave was a pious one that obeyed Allah and did good deeds, then these good deeds would accompany this person. When a person comes out of the grave, imagine that. Your soul is now in your body. You have consciousness with the body. You can hear with your ears. You can see with your eyes. You can speak, you can smell, you can taste, you can feel. You see that the earth cracks open and you step out of the grave. There, your deeds will have taken the form of a person. And this person accompanies you. If a person was a pious person, the deeds would come in a beautiful form. This person will have a beautiful form. And the deeds would comfort a person.
There are two angels that accompany a person. Allah reveals Sa'iq wa Shaheed. Sa'iq is the one, the angel that drives the person to where the judgment will occur. This is the angel that guides, that steers a person. And Shaheed is the angel that stands as a witness. For some people this will be a pleasurable walk. For some people it will be, every step will contain an ocean of joy. Every step. Because they were pious. And for some it will be a walk of shame. And not only that, but they will be afraid. Some of the devastating and frightful scenes that they will see on the Day of Judgment, that, they, that, that people have not witnessed before, will be present. Had people seen some of these things that are going to occur that you and I will see, had we seen these in this life, our hearts would have exploded for reason that they would not be able to bear them. Whenever a pious person on the Day of Judgment, as they're walking to Asham, where the assembly will occur, where people will be assembled, whenever the pious person sees the amazing matters, that the sun is extinguished or that the sun will be extinguished after it comes close to the heads of the people and so on. When a person sees that the oceans are on fire, when a person sees hell fire, a piece of it, as they are walking, to the plains of resurrection. A person's deeds will say to them, Laysa yuradu bihi man Allah. The one that obeyed Allah. So your deeds, a person's deeds will tell them if they were pious. The one that obeyed Allah in the worldly life is not intended by these things. These things, they are not to strike fear into the heart of the person that obeyed Allah. وَإِنَّمَا يُرَادُ بِهِ مَنْ عَصَى اللَّهَ تَعَالَى مَوْلَاهَ Rather, these are to scare the people who disobeyed Allah, تبارك وتعالى. ثُمَّ كَذَّبَ بِآيَاتِهِ وَاتَّبَعَ هَوَاهَ and those people who belied the great signs of the power of Allah that came. And the ayahs of the Qur'an, they belied them and instead followed their desires. It is narrated that the deeds will say to the pious, Ya Habibi ma alayka min hadha shay. Oh my beloved, don't worry. None of this is for you. The deeds, as this person is walking, this pious person, the deeds will say, You followed the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and you did not go after your desires, the worldly desires. فَمَا عَلَيْكَ الْيَوْمَ مِنْ هَمٍ وَلَا حُزْنٍ there is nothing upon you, no worry and no sadness until you enter paradise. As for the person who was disobedient, 
when this person exits the grave, their deeds will also accompany them. This person, when he exits the grave and he looks to one side, he sees his deeds in the, in the form of a person, dark in the face, scary looking, striking fear into the heart of the person that committed these deeds. Whenever such a person passes by the dangers, some of the horrors of the beginning of the Day of Judgment, these grave matters, seeing the seas on fire, water and fire together, boiling, seeing the sky crack, seeing how a piece of hellfire is lashing out at different people, pouncing upon or trying to pounce upon some, when it sees all of these things and this person is worried, the deeds of this person will say, Ya Adu Allah, O enemy of Allah, Hada Kulluhu Lak. All of this is for you. Ya Adu Allah, Hada Kulluhu Lak. Wa anta al muradu bih, and you are the one that is, that is intended by it. On that day, the earth would bring out everything that is inside its belly. It would bring, as Allah revealed, وَأَخْرَجَتِ الْأَرْضُ أَثْقَالَهَا It would bring out the corpses from within it that are now alive. It would bring out the treasures that were hidden away by people, gold and silver, treasure troves, rubies, emeralds, diamonds, sapphire, you name it. The deeds are ordered to also be there, to accompany a person. The pious person would find his deeds in the shape of a handsome person who is illuminated. And the other person would not find this. So one of us imagines him or herself after the second blowing of the horn. Imagine what will be upon you on that day when you are surrounded. When all of the things that were sinful that one of us did or that a kafir did when he comes out of the grave. When a person comes out of his grave and he was a sinful person, as well as the deeds being there in the form of a person. The angel will say, pointing at the side of the grave, the angel will say, Ya Adu Allah, O enemy of Allah, Khud Amalak, lift your deeds. فَحْمِلْهُ عَلَىٰ ظَهْرِكَ And carry now these deeds on your back. You, have been, you will be paid in full. This is what you gathered in the life of the world. Now carry it to your judgment. It is revealed that the angel will say, تَلْتَذُّ بِهِ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَلَمْ تُرَاقِبْ مَوْلَاكَ This is what you used to seek enjoyment in. And you did not care that you were disobeying Allah. وَقَدْ عَلِمْتَ أَنَّكَ أَنَّهُ مُطَّلِعٌ عَلَيْكَ وَيَرَاكَ And you knew that Allah sees you. تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَى so this person takes this load on the side of his grave, from the side of his grave, and he puts it on his back. 
and he finds it heavier than a mountain among the mountains of this world. And so he is punished even before the assembly takes place. the jinn will be resurrected. The humans will be resurrected. Some animals will be resurrected to show the justice that will occur on that day. <laughs> if a person had committed an injustice such that they used a needle unjustly, they knew that it wasn't theirs to use and they used it. They will be asked about even this on the Day of Judgment. Once Israfil السلام, stops blowing into the horn, all of the creation, this is other than the prophets and other than the pious because they have nothing to fear. The other people which is most of the people, they will look into the sky. They will look into the sky and they will be waiting for it to start cracking. Allah revealed. إِلَى السَّمَاءُ شَقَّتْ And إِلَى السَّمَاءُ فَطَرَتْ That when the sky cracks, every sky, the first sky, the second, third, all the way up to the seventh, they will crack one by one. And the angels will pour out of them. This is the order of Allah. The angels, the order of Allah will reach them. فَوَقَفَ الْخَلَائِقُ كُلُّ وَاحِدٍ مِّنْهُمْ يَنْظُرُ إِلَى السَّمَاءِ Everyone, apart from the prophets of course and the pious, they will stand looking towards the sky, waiting for it to crack. As they are doing that, nobody will give any consideration to the person standing next to them. Whether it was one's brother, sister, mother, father, son or daughter, husband or wife. It does not matter on that day because people will be concerned for themselves. When the sky cracks and the skies are above the stars, the stars will also fall from the sky. Allah revealed, إِذَا النُّجُومٌ كَدَرَتْ All these things will happen. The earth will be struck. The people they will be taken to a place where it is dark next to the Sirat, which they will attempt to cross later. But all the people will be taken to a darkness, a dark area near the Sirat. And then the earth will be struck. إِذَا دُكَّتِ الْأَرْضُ دَكَّنْ دَكَّا As Allah revealed in the Qur'an. The earth will be struck once and twice. Again and again it will be struck until the mountains are destroyed. And the valleys are filled and nothing sticks out. There is nothing to seek the shade of. There is nothing to hide behind Nobody is able to escape that day. This earth, it will resemble stretched 
leather, and changed earth, and changed ground, an earth upon which Allah has not been disobeyed, an earth where only justice will prevail, an earth where no blood has been shed. Allah revealed, فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَهُ It's that time where anybody who did an atom's weight worth of good will see the reward for it. وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرًّا يَرَهُ And whoever committed an atom's worth of weight, of haram, of evil or injustice, they will see it. An atom's worth. What does an atom weigh? Nowadays, if scientists look at it generally, generally they might say it's negligible. How are you going to measure it? Or who wants to go into the details of how much an atom weighs? It's so small. It's negligible. But even that, Allah revealed. وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةً A ذَرَّةً is an atom. Of shar, evil, yara. He will see its result on the day of judgment. That day is all about justice. al is one of the names of the day of judgment. It means the day of truth. Where everything will come out. Everyone will get their fill. Everyone will get what they deserve. And what they deserved in this life, except that some people, they will be forgiven. Some Muslims, they will be forgiven. Some of their sins. And some will be forgiven all of their sins. <coughs> Ibn al Jawzi said, when the people are gathered, you will, be, you will be able to hear on the Day of Judgment. We will hear footsteps. Footsteps going this way. Footsteps going that way. <coughs> People gasping, people screaming, people drowning in their own sweat, gargling, drowning, choking. Perhaps we would be able to hear the crushing of people's skulls underneath other people's feet. These people that were arrogant, even Muslims that were arrogant in this life, they will be reduced to a very small size. And people in their confusion, running to the left, running to the right, yamuju fi ba'd, as Allah revealed, like waves, people crashing into each other. They would crush these people. Perhaps... Allah would enable some people to strike further fear into their hearts, to hear the crushing of the skulls of these people under their feet. On that day, if a person was a kafir in this life, then on that day crying will not benefit. It is too late to cry. So the earth will be pounded again and again. Al Ard and Al Jibal and the mountains. Fadukata Dakatam Wahida. And either Dukatil Ardu Dakan Dakka. A duck is like a pounding, a smack. So then everybody will be brought to the plains of resurrection which are said to be in Asham. This is where everybody will come. They will be gathered there. Al-awwalun and al-akhirun. 
those that existed before us right at the very beginning and those that will exist after us neither have we seen those that have existed before us i.e. in the time of Adam alayhi salam nor are we likely to see those that we, we hope not to see or be among the people who live at the very end upon whom the horn will be blown because they will be kuffar But all of them, al awwalun and al akhirun they will all be gathered. The skies will begin to crack. Like clouds, when you see the clouds and how they form and they have cracks within them. They are different shapes. Like that, the sky will begin to crack. So imagine yourself that you can hear the tearing and the cracking of the sky. Like when it thunders sometimes. It sounds like, even if you're in your house, it sounds like someone is shutting up shop for the day and they are pulling the shutters down. Like that. Imagine a person hears that coming from the sky itself as it cracks. And this sound will fill the earth in everybody's ears. On that day, how will one of us seek comfort? Or how will one of us seek to reaffirm oneself? How will one of us calm down? What will one of us do? A person, many a people, will not be able to control their leg shaking. Allah revealed in the Quran, You will see people as though they are drunk. But they are not drunk. But but it is the torture of Allah that they fear that is severe. A person sometimes if they're really scared, what can happen is that they start to talk gibberish. They start to talk in a way, yes, they may be saying words, but they don't make sense. When a person is scared and they want to make an excuse about something, they start to say all sorts of things. They, they In their mind it might... Makes sense that this dot is no, it's not really, it doesn't connect. But they say it anyway because, because they're afraid. They're jittery, they're panicking. Like that on the Day of Judgment. It will be as though people are drunk. The Day of Judgment at this point in time will have already begun. It began in terms of the chronology. It began when the people started to come out of their graves. On that day, the only shade will be the shade of the Grand Arsh. Underneath it, the prophets will be in a cool state they will be wearing clothes of honor and riding animals and the pious people will be on high platforms made of noor. Some of the people will be wearing crowns. Some of the people, their faces will be brighter than the moon. And some people will be under the scorching heat of the sun. One of us may have a person standing next to us on our right hand side. We look at them 
and they are drowning in their sweat. They are panicking like a drowning person in the sea. You see how this person flaps about in the ocean when it's violent. There's thunder, there is wind. This person seeks to stay, stay above and breathe. This person is drowning to your right. You might look to your left and you see that there is another person who is sweating, but the sweat is only up to their ankles. One looks at one's own situation. You will see this, no doubt. You will see this on the Day of Judgment. Lady Aisha, radiyallahu anha, when she heard that some people will not be clothed on the Day of Judgment, she said, Ya Rasulullah, won't people look at each other? And he said what means, alayhi salatu wasalam, people will have what is more concerning to them on that day. On that day, a part of hellfire will be brought This part of hellfire, it is of course hot and it will be giving off heat and some people's faces, as you can imagine, they burn just by being close to it, not even being inside it. And this piece, this part of hellfire, it will have 70,000 chains on it, each chain is being pulled by 70,000 angels. On that day it will rain. It will rain out of the mercy of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala upon some people. And this will be a relief for them. Whereas others, hellfire will be close to them will burn them. The one who is close to hellfire on that day will be able to hear the chains inside hellfire clunking and clanging. The shackles in the distant valleys of hell causing an echo. People will be able to hear that in a sham on the Day of Judgment. And this adds to what the people will be, fear, will be feeling on that day. Allah revealed وَبُرِّزَتِ الْجَحِيمُ لِمَنْ يَرَى Al-Jahim, a part of hellfire, will be brought forward for the people to see. And they will try to lunge at people. Allah will give this part of hellfire the ability to lunge, to dive, to try to grab people and pull it in. Allah revealed in the Quran, Ya ma'ashar al jinni wal insi in istata'atum an tanfuzu min aqtari samawati wal ardi fanfuzu la tanfuzuna illa bi sultan Allah revealed, O oh humans and jinn, if you are able, and you will not be able, if you are able to escape the Day of Judgment by climbing up into the skies and beyond, or if you are able to dig into the earth and dig and dig and dig and dig and escape, try. Famfudu, la tamfudu. You will not be able to escape. 
Allah revealed in the Quran, وَجَاءَ رَبُّكَ وَالْمَلَكُ صَفًّا صَفًّا وَجَاءَ رَبُّكَ Al-Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal radiyallahu anhu said, إِنَّمَا جَاءَتْ قُدْرَتُهُ Meaning, إِنَّمَا جَاءَتْ آثَارُ قُدْرَةِ اللَّهِ on that day, a person will see the great signs of the torture of Allah that people have never seen before. This is the meaning of also the hadith. In Allah ghadib al yawma ghadaban. Ghadab doesn't mean anger here. It's not permissible to attribute anger to Allah. Walayyadu billah. Lam yaghdab qablahu mithlahu wa lam yaghdab ba'dahu mithlah. This is a day on which people will see great, great, great signs of the torture of Allah. They will horrify some people. If people could die just by seeing something, they would have died. On this day, the ghadab of Allah, meaning the great signs of the adab of Allah, will be seen. And there are many other details in this regard that are mentioned about the Day of Judgment, including the Book of Deeds, including the weighing of the deeds themselves, including passing over the Surat. All of us, you will receive your book of deeds. I will receive my book of deeds. You will see al-mizan, that is the balance on which the deeds are to be weighed. You will see the surat. We ask Allah to enable us to pass it to paradise. Amen. So these matters are coming on the Day of Judgment. Allah revealed, Inna khayr al taqwa One of us, if we want to travel, or we are preparing for something that's coming tomorrow, we gather our rations. We have a meal prepared we make sure there's enough fuel in the tank. We make sure that we have extra blankets. We make sure and we make sure and we make sure. We ration like this. Allah revealed, in khayr zad the best zad, the best rations, or the best rationing is at-taqwa. Learning the Islamic knowledge and then performing the obligatory and staying away from the haram. This is the best way. And the Prophet والسلام, said, In Akyas and Nas, Akfaruhum is Lil Maut. The most intelligent person is the one that prepares most for death, actively prepares. It's easy, brothers and sisters, to get lost in our day-to-day -day activities that we do without an intention, without an intention for the sake of Allah. It's easy. We will regret this on the Day of Judgment. Like Ibn al-Jawzi said, every breath, imagine it to be like a safe within which you deposit, you can, you have an opportunity to deposit something good. But many of these breaths, most people do not deposit something good into these safes, safes that will be opened up on the Day of Judgment and they will see what is inside. Many people will see these breaths unfold on the Day of Judgment as their life is examined. And they are asked, why this? Why that? What did you do with your knowledge? Did you learn? Did you pray? 
did you this, did you that, they will see these safes empty. And the person on that day will regret, oh, I wish, at least I wish I had said, La ilaha illallah. I wish I was spending my time doing this and this and this. Instead, I was doing non-beneficial matters. I didn't even think of maybe making a, sincerely, making a good intention while I was doing some of these matters that could actually be beneficial, but I, I, I didn't do it for the reason of worshipping Allah, I just did it for fun. Like I exercised just for fun, just because it makes me feel good, but I didn't intend that I'm doing it for the sake of Allah, to strengthen my body, to be able to worship Allah. I didn't do Oh, what a waste. What a pointless deed in the grand scheme of things. So a person should always be tuned in, as it were. They should always be aware of what they're doing, when they're doing it, and how they are doing it. Because, I mean, quite frankly, each and every one of us is going to die. And each and every one of us is going to be in our grave alone. Each and every one of us is going to be resurrected. And then we will see what we will see. Wala hawla wala quwata illa billah. We ask Allah to protect us. Amen. Let us recite Al Fatiha uh, like we do send the reward to the prophets and specifically the Prophet, Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu was salam. And we send a likeness of our reward to Shaykh Abdullah al Harari rahimahullah because of whom we all manage to learn some part of the glorious Islamic knowledge. Al-Fatiha.